Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this non-title fight. It's the number three, number four heavyweight championship champ in the championship division league heavyweight championship division league gentlemen and this should be a very interesting match ladies and gentlemen let's get back to the arena for this matchup all right coming up next it's a ufc heavyweight showdown Here he is, the decorated kickboxer, back for more here tonight. And he's so comfortable in the striking realm. It's almost like he started kickboxing before he ever was reading or writing. Oh, it's unbelievable to see someone that's so comfortable under so much duress. I know. When you're in kickboxing range, you are in the fire. There is no safety. You're right in range to be getting knocked out. But he does not fear that. He loves it. He loves the, com he loves the combat. He loves the engagement. But what you have to understand is he's not engaging his opponents on their terms. He's doing it on his terms. Whether or not he wants to be in close with the big punches or he wants to be at range landing kicks, he's just constantly putting damage on you. Top, bottom, up, low, it does not matter. This guy is a dominant striker, one of the best kickboxers the UFC has ever seen. And in terms of the punching technique and the jab, as good as anyone in this division. All right, here's the heavyweight wrestler Curtis Razor Blades representing Team Elevation there in Colorado. And here's a guy who, at least on paper, has more takedowns secured offensively than any fighter in UFC heavyweight history. You know, they talk about specialists, and at times you find a guy that's so good at one skill that you know what's coming and you can't stop it. Curtis Blades is one of those guys. He's a national wrestling champion. He's very big, he's very skilled, and he has great cardio. The great cardio allows him to press this wrestling style on guys, and they can't keep up with him. He is solely one of the top five heavyweights in the world. And he's certainly got a good work rate for this heavyweight division. Works as hard in training as anybody. Still in search of that elusive first championship opportunity. Big spot for Curtis Razor Blades here tonight. And now our tail of the tape for this heavyweight fight. So these fighters relatively close in age, just a year apart, with the same height and a similar reach. And now to get us started, here is Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, flying out of the blue corner, a kickboxer holding a professional record of eight wins, no losses. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 247 pounds. Fighting out of Paris, France, Surreal Bogomolka! And now to his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 14 wins, 3 losses, and 1 no contest. He stands 64 inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds. Fighting out of Chicago, Illinois, Curtis Racer! Play. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata. Ready? Ready? All right, so here we go. Round one of this highly anticipated tilt between the strong striker and the decorated grappler. Any chance that these guys mix it up, or are you just expecting them to stick to what got them to the I'm expecting a pretty straightforward approach from both of these fighters. The striker will try to lead with his punches and his kicks, and the grappler will try to time a takedown, time a clinch position so he can start to work towards a lot of those great judo throws that he possesses. Once on the ground, he is in his realm and will start to chase submissions. Oh, big elbow. with that jab attempt there. That one's not in. Nice strike. Slips the left hand. Continues to mix it up from under the head, mixing in some body shots. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Quick level change. Oh, he went single, rotate it outside. A technique, what a takedown, great high impact skill. You could feel the canvas 
just reverberating here at the Broncos. I mean, right there, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it's like me running anywhere, John. <laughs> That's right. Back to the feet now. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as he gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this space to land these beautiful ground and pound combinations. Well, as usual, suffocating work from the top here by Blades. Under two minutes now to go in the round. Strong thought of work here, staying busy. Let's go, let's go, finish this So 33 total strikes have landed for Curtis Blades. Oh, knee to the head, that never feels good. And they separate. Nice counter shot there. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are gonna take their toll as this fight goes off. Big punch lands through the middle. Well, he has certainly found the range and staying pretty busy here on the field. He's being busy, but it's also the timing and the accuracy that's allowing him to land so many attacks. to go in this one. Oh, nice block there from the crowd as he finally gets the takedown. He stayed committed to the offensive wrestling and now he has his own room. A sigh of relief from the people watching because they were tired of watching him flail around trying to get takedowns and get defended over and over again. Finally gets it. Now what does he do with the top of the floor? All right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's going to sleep. All right, round two is now upon us. Yeah, Pretty competitive two, right? first five right? minutes, I thought. It's exactly okay. what we expected. We expected when we saw this on the match sheet that these two guys were evenly matched. Let's see who really takes control as we go into the second round. Big powerful punch land. Now we get back to range. Well, he's been pretty accurate tonight. He's landed some significant strikes, but his corner's looking for him to mix it up a little bit more and just throw more volume. Oh, big knees! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press it. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh, big knee. Oh, late defense on the takedown and scrambles to his feet. Nicely done. Across the midpoint in this one. All right, great position for him here. He's got the full mount. See if he can get that ground and pound going. Oh, he's got to get it going, but he can't rush. A lot of times, guys get in the full mount and they rush, they get nervous. They're like, oh my goodness, I'm winning. Reality is, you're winning, but it can change in a matter of seconds because then they can be gone. He's got to drop his hips be really heavy at the opponent's base, and then just start to work. Make the opponent give his back so that he can try to get his chokes off or find great ground and pound with very patient ground and pound from such a dominant position. He jumps on a headlock. We call this in wrestling just a headlock, and if you're not careful, you can get stuck in an arm triangle. Watch triangle, watch triangle. There he is, he's moving to the finishing position. Now watch, he go parallel right next to his opponent. Might have got him with a choke. He got it. He got it, John. Oh, he got it done. Absolutely. 
Absolutely, he finishes his opponent by way of submission. Let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishing fights. So there he is, your winner by submission, and that's exactly how you put the rest of this division on notice. Looks like this guy could be a factor moving forward in this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Dan Mergliata calls a stop to this contest at four minutes, 19 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by tap out due to arm triangle choke, Surreal Bogomolka! All right, so there he is, all smiles, and rightfully so, after he gets the job done by submission tonight. You told me off the air before the fight that he was going to submit him, and that's exactly what happened. Man. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard and his opponent is known to lay in the guard. He made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory. All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about that, ladies and gentlemen? Does this man might get the next title shot at the light heavyweight, I mean, at the heavyweight champion? I mean, it could be down the road, end of the year, or beginning of next year, ladies and gentlemen. We do not know what UFC is planning. But ladies and gentlemen, if you like what you watch here on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you're watching on Twitch, make sure you hit that follow button. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have more great USA content coming your way. See you later. Peace out.